Hello, guys. Uh, this is uh, One Piece TCG IRL here. Uh, reporting back from an event in Top Choice Gaming where they had a case tournament. Uh, this was a breakdown of the decks that were uh, in the event uh, that attended. So uh, right away, we can see that Sakazuki is the most dominant uh, deck in the, in the room, comprising about 30% of the field, uh, which is really good considering that uh, it is going to be banned pretty soon in June. Uh, but until June, uh, we have about, uh, what is it, the remainder of April... Uh, the remainder of May, and uh, lots of, uh, I mean, um, I don't know if it's the beginning of June, but I think it's going to be the, the most of June uh, until Sakazuki actually gets banned. So until then, uh, the black leader, the best black leader in the room is going to be uh, Sakazuki. Uh, surprisingly enough, we only see a uh, almost an 8% uh, representation of the field for Gekko Moria. Uh, despite that, Gekko Moria 8-drop uh, belongs in this uh, deck for Thriller Bark. Uh, the deck that can utilize it the best is going to be Sakazuki, uh, which is why the people have to deter away from playing Gekko Moria and decided to play Sakazuki instead. Uh, Sakazuki does have the uh, access to Toshigi as well to be uh, making the deck more consistent so that you could open up uh, any of your navy cards that you might need, but also being able to access uh, Rob Lucci as well uh, to be able to bottom or KO uh, two units on the board, uh, making Sakazuki one of the best controlled uh, leaders in the game. Uh, and the, the most second represented deck is uh, going to be Karakuri. Uh, Karakuri was represented at, I believe, 12. Uh, 12, I believe. So if you guys do the math here, we have 77 players for this event. Uh, so 15.6% is probably going to be like 12 or 13. So we have 12, uh, 13 Karakuris that were in the field as well. So uh, Karakuri uh, outnumbering the uh, NL players uh, by a three, or is it, I want to say like a four difference in players. So uh, looks like Karakuri has to, uh, pick it up, uh, pick up steam once more uh, since its release in OPL uh, four or three, one of those two numbers. Uh, so since then, uh, Karakuri has still been uh, one of the best yellow leaders, uh, just because of all the yellow triggers that came out. There's a uh, yellow card that was uh, supposed to be banned as well, uh, but it it wasn't banned because it's going to be uh, until June. So reject is still going to be legal uh, on opening day. Uh, surprisingly enough for me, I think uh, the most surprising thing was that Perona actually uh, occupied. A large number of the the field as well. Uh, Perona actually had eight players uh, play uh, that particular leader. It's almost like as it's almost like a Sakazuki leader in the sense that it can control the board uh, mid to late game. Uh, but it, Perona does uh, have their own late game options as Green has one of the best uh, late tool options such as uh, Doflamingo, uh, being able to lock down three uh, units down so that they can't restand. On their next turn is pretty phenomenal so that's perona's late game strategy so she does have a mid to late game removal so that's why i would see uh see more perona in the future uh, i didn't think so in the beginning but now I, i'm starting to believe in perona uh for this next upcoming format and of course anel uh anel strangely enough uh lost representation uh from the last meta uh where anel was winning events i'm not sure if anel has the power to win events anymore since uh, onami has now been printed uh, Onambi being able to provide banish to leaders and so that uh, leaders like the next one over here like Yamato here is able to capitalize on the late uh, the aggressive game where Onami can come down and then do two damage to Anel here uh, making them uh, permanently lose those cards uh, where they cannot see it anymore. Uh, Reiju uh, a combo deck the only combo deck in the uh, the game right now uh, in my opinion because the other decks kind of rely on um, seeing one ofs that are really powerful. Reiju, you have to have uh, a setup where you have the uh, the German 66 in the drop area and uh, being able to use the smaller guys to play the the bigger guys, essentially is the plan of Re Reiju. Uh, a lot of drawing that Reiju can do, so you can expect a lot of counter powers uh, to happen in, in games. Um, but you do have to play in a way that uh, makes you so that your hand size is at five uh, before you play out the Reiju, the four drop Reiju that allows you to draw two cards. So, uh, yeah, so Reiju uh, coming in at six, uh, or no, there was four Reijus in the tournament, so a pretty nice representation there. And Gecko Moria, I believe, only had about six. Yeah, so let me see if I double check here. Um, yeah, so Ge Gecko Moria represented at six. So there's six players who decided to play Gecko Moria for this event uh, out of 77. Uh, feels like a really small number, uh, but uh, yeah, in the composition of the pie, it is kind of small. It is only uh, one tenth of the field. Uh, but the Gecko Moria, what he is able to do over Sakazuki is that he could play out Perona. Uh, I believe it's a four drop or a five drop. 
but one of those uh, Peronas that allow you to discard cards from your opponent's hand. So it plays kind of like the hand control strategy in the early games, and then it wraps up the game using the 8-drop uh, Gecko Moria. And uh, yeah, and then after that, we uh, the next most represented leader uh, after Reju is going to be Law. RP Law actually showed its face. Uh, two players were on it, uh, so we can kind of see uh, the field be uh, occupied by really strong leaders, so kind of diverse, I would say. Uh, even though Sakazuki is 30% uh, of the field, uh, it's a lot more diverse than it was last format, where we were only seeing cards like uh, Sakazuki, Enel, uh, Purple Luffy. Uh, another side note that, uh, to note is that Purple, Purple Luffy was nowhere to be found in this tournament. Uh, no Zoros either, so uh, Zoro being able to check Sakazuki is now out of the format. So now I can we can sort of see the control uh, game come back. However, Yamato is still in the picture, so Yamato can uh, introduce a lot of aggressive elements to the uh, to the meta game. So uh, even though Zoro is not seen in this particular tournament, I can still see Zoro still coming back. Uh, but Yamato is going to be the new aggressive leader uh, to play for the for this particular meta. And then, of course, if you consider uh, RP Law to be aggressive, that can also be considered an aggressive leader as well. Uh, the other leaders that were in the field here, uh, I believe there was a, a, a RG Law. Only uh, two players were on it. Uh, however, I cannot confirm it was two or not because I'm not sure if they were a casual player or not because they were sitting in the tables uh, where they were casual. So I'm not entirely sure if uh, there was two RG Laws or not. But I can confirm that it was definitely one. Uh, there was no Uta. Uh, Uta was not, nowhere to be found in this uh, particular meta. Uh, no Croc either. I mean, there was one Croc, but there was no Nami. So Croc was the only blue leader in this tournament. Uh, and then there was a Big Mom player. Of course, you guys probably know that player. Uh, he, he's he been playing it since set three. Um, and then we have, um, yeah, I mean, no, there was no Kid either. So no Kid uh, as a green leader and no Uta. So... Uh, we can see a sort of like a uniformity of what's uh, the best uh, leaders for their color. And so the best leader for purple right now is going to be Reju. Uh, and then the best black leader is going to be Sakazuki. And then we have the best, uh, I wouldn't say the best yellow leader, but the best, uh, I don't know how to categorize Yamato. Uh, Yamato is a class of its own. Anel is going to probably, uh, Katakuri is going to be the best yellow leader. And then Perona is going to be the best um the green leader, I guess. So yeah, so no Uta. So uh, yeah, really cool uh, representation in the top eight. Uh, this was our top, top eight breakdown where we had three Sakuzukis. So uh, already good conversion rate. It was uh, went from a 29.9% .9 to a 37.5% uh, breakdown. So yeah, so we can already see the power level of Sakuzuki uh, doing really well uh, compared to the Karakuri, which was twenty uh, went from 15.6% uh, to 25% in the top eight. So a uh, good conversion rate as well. So you can sort of see that the uh, Nell has been replaced by Karakuri in this particular meta. Uh, for Perona, we have a 12.5% representation, which is uh, only one. So we have one Perona that was able to make it, whereas in this one we have... Uh, 10.4 uh, percent so uh good conversion rate there and reju had a really good conversion rate of 5.2 percent uh to uh, 12.5 percent and then now we had uh 10.4 to 12.5 so uh that was our breakdown for this particular meta uh if you guys are interested in the deck list uh go over to ig and type up uh, top choice gaming where igs will uh i mean where top choice gaming will uh, post all the top eight deck lists because uh, they had the consent of the players to do so uh, if you guys want the deck profiles, there are two deck profiles that I was able to get of Perona and uh, Reju. So if you guys are interested in playing these uh, decks for the future events, especially the one coming up in Santa Clara, uh, definitely check out my profile and learn what the players uh, want to share about the deck list so that you guys can be ready uh, for that particular event, uh, knowing how to play those uh, leaders. Uh, but anyways, the, signing out, uh, One Piece TCG IRL, signing out. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.